What the f*** is going on? I like to party. Jesus, honey, wax much? This is Unwaxed. Get in, Lizzie. We're going shopping. With Sophia and Sistine Stallone. Did we just become best friends? Yep. <laughs> And welcome back to another episode of the Unwax Podcast with your favorite sisters, Sophia. And Giggles. <laughs> Giggles the clown. Ew. I don't want to be a clown. He didn't say you looked great today, so. Thanks for letting people know that, <laughs> Sophia. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, wait. I want to kind of start out with this first question because you thought this one that I wrote down was a really weird question to Can ask. I give some context? This is one of those episodes where we actually have nothing prepared. So <laughs> I don't know what she wrote down. She doesn't know what I wrote down. Yeah. And I opened my computer right as we sat here. And the first thing says, would you give up your whole life if you got a letter from Hogwarts yeah. debate? Okay, so this is this is why I asked. So currently we're in this like Hogwarts, Harry Potter series binge, right? And so I thought, I said, would you, Sistine, if you got a letter right now? So you would be like a very old high school student. But, Are you saying just, I'm a super senior? <laughs> super, super, super <laughs> senior. But you had to give up your entire life. Like you can never see your parents again, your friends, your animals, uh, your boyfriend, whoever it is, you have to go to Harry Potter, like, or not Harry Potter, you have to go to Hogwarts. They said, okay, you have, would you give up everything? No question. <laughs> Sayonara, family. I'll never see you again. Okay, side question. What if it wasn't Hogwarts? It was one of the other schools, like the all girls like school. Like your backup school? Yeah, <laughs> it's your backup choice. Um, Still, yes. You would. Sophia, you have one life on this earth. And you have the option to be a wizard with a wand and live in a mythical land. Yeah. Yeah, I would too. Well, okay. I would too. <laughs> no, mom. no taxes. Uh, that's No that, nine to fives. All, who said that they didn't have taxes? They don't show it in the movie, so I'm assuming they don't. No. Like no real world responsibilities. Think about, think about the classes that you get to take, like dark arts class. You know, I mean, it's incredible. Quidditch, you get that's your that's your PE. But the, I, you know, I started laughing last night because we're talking about all the classes that we could possibly take at Hogwarts. Now we're really thinking this is a possibility. Yeah. And then we said, what if they gave us our schedule back? And it, like, we look at our schedule, it says U.S. history. No, it's like <laughs> dark arts, Quidditch training, all of the Hogwarts classes. And then it's like Spanish 101. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> like, wait, econ? <laughs> Biology. <laughs> Anatomy? No, I think that would be so much fun. Okay, fine. I would. I you would know what I'm going to start doing? What? Instead of asking men what their zodiac is on a date, I'm going to say, what house are you in? That definitely tells a lot about someone's character. I went out with a guy and he told me Hufflepuff. I never called him back. That's a... Oh, I that, like well, not Hufflepuff. For, not for that reason. But Robert he, Pattinson was a Hufflepuff and he was definitely, arguably, the cutest one in the show, movie. You think? Yeah. Who do you think? I don't know. We're on. We're on. Uh, who? Wait. Who? What are you? I guarantee she's gonna say Snape. No, sick person. Are you <laughs> kidding me? <laughs> why did? Why did we have a giant cutout? Snape oh. looks like he could be my dad, though. Like we do, kind of have some similar facial features. You guys and the do. Hair. What if that's the reason why you get called? Is because Snape's your father, and you are a Slytherin. It makes sense. That's true. It does make sense. Wait. Okay. So just just to change subjects. Um, Please. So I found out that the rash I talked about. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> was, guys, wait. Can I just talk? Can I vent a little bit? What are we talking can I about can I right now? I'm gonna vent. So I, a couple episodes ago, probably the first episode, I talked about how I had like a rash all over my neck and my face. So um, apparently, I have apparently. late onset eczema. So now I have eczema, and now I have to deal with this. My eyes are burning. My neck is super itchy, and I didn't realize this is a thing. Cystic acne and eczema at 27 years old. You I'm got freaking eczema. I got eczema. You got eczema. <laughs> you got eczema. I'm not going to lie, Sophia. <laughs> yeah. You're, you haven't been on a great journey with your skin so no, far. No, my body's freaking out right now. But I'll tell you something I did that was so stupid, and I caught it yesterday. What? Just to make yourself feel a little better. <laughs> a few episodes ago, I was bragging about how my skin is so good and I'm not doing that much and that's my secret. Turns out... Do you the, have eczema? No, I don't have eczema. <laughs> Turns out the moisturizer that I was putting on my face every day and every night is a moisturizer. What is this, like a mean girl's thing? It's foot cream? 
It's leave-in conditioner. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, I'm putting leave-in leave condi- conditioner. How is your face not freaking out? I don't know. Maybe I is have that a to- hack? Maybe, but don't Sophia, try this at home. But if Sophia, you do try it, let us know the result. <laughs> it was an honest mistake because I got a whole kit: a conditioner, a serum, and a moisturizer, and they all look the same, no. all the same color. The writing is really small. And I wasn't really thinking. I was just putting it on. And it a feels hair, like a moisturizer. A hair company also makes moisturizers yes, for yes, face and stuff. Yes. But apparently not because it's for your hair. I've been putting it on my face for months. It's probably just like, it probably said like leave in moisturizing. I was wondering why I smelled like, um, you know, when like a dog just gets a bath. <laughs> yeah, you, you really <laughs> you smell like that all the time. Canine. That's, fu- oh God. Yeah, no, it, it's, we're definitely struggling. Uh, and then I uh, bought all this stuff. I got mad at Sustain on the walk today. I go, did you drink my turmeric shot? And she goes, yes, it helped my throat. You know what's so weird about living gut. with someone? There's this whole refrigerator debate of what you're allowed to have, what's community food, and yeah. then what's just yours. You're so bad at sharing. That's, I... <sighs> What have I not shared with you, Sistine? Your milk. That's false. You like oat milk. I like almond milk. Sometimes I take some of yours and you're like, "Ah." First of all, I never knew that you took my almond milk. That makes sense why I'm running out fast. I shouldn't have said anything. That's really, thank you. I'm going to go buy two today. No, I just I just bought all this stuff to fix because I think I have like inflammation or something in my body and my body's freaking out. Do you and think- And so I don't know how to fix it. So I'm eating all these anti-inflammatories. I'm drinking like celery juice, which is so gross in the morning and turmeric and ginger and cayenne. I want to throw babe, up. Babe, babe, some Madame Boo. Do you think you're really stressed and that's why all these things are coming out of your pores? <laughs> Does it sound like I'm stressed? A little bit. I, well, this is the problem. This is what's what's so annoying about stress because that definitely isn't a, like an attribute to everything that I'm feeling. Of course. But what I'm pissed about is that when these things come up, you're even more stressed because now you're stressed out that your skin is stressed out. So now it's just like this horrible tunnel. And all of a sudden, everyone's like, oh, meditate and relax. My, I look like a toad and I'm peeling off my neck obviously Sistine said I was shedding the other, like two weeks ago and I'm supposed to calm down <sighs> so I'm not calm <laughs> we can tell yeah so this is fun if you have anything to recommend and maybe you should go back to therapy <sighs> I'm going on Thursday that's Ew. great Ew. <laughs> hot girls do therapy hot girls have eczema and hot girls have <laughs> IBS thank you anyway we went to LA recently because Sophia gave an incredible speech and I'm very proud of you thank you I did have money if you were gonna stumble and you didn't so I did lose ten dollars yeah you did it with our security guy that was protecting us and he goes that's messed up (laughs) you took my money he took my money he took my money oh that's funny um yeah so to what Sistine was talking about we went to LA because I had had two open heart surgeries and one of them was at Children's Hospital and so they came to me because they wanted me to talk about my story and share my experience and then also share how I'm doing now. Which I hope they don't listen to this because I <laughs> She's totally like, I'm to, doing great. I'm amazing. <laughs> um, but no, so obviously, no, I am doing well. So I come into this thinking it's a small luncheon. They say it's a luncheon. So you think luncheon's probably what, like 50 women at you know, I was assuming it would be like six 70s. tables. Yeah, of yeah. Eight people. I thought it table. was just gonna be a couple women that are big donors, and I'm just supposed to like razz and dazzle them. The Ugh. thing is, is that I have a severe fear of public speaking. Severe. Like I cannot stand. Like even in high school and college, there was nothing more terrifying to me than standing up in front of an audience. But that shocks me from you because you have a podcast. Yeah. And you're very comfortable speaking on camera. Like you have a TV us. show. Every time you do an interview or you're on live TV or you have a Zoom thing, you're so eloquent and you know exactly what to say and you nail it. Yeah. So that is shocking to me that you'd be so nervous. There's to- a difference though. When you're when you're going up and presenting something, when it's a script, like that, that freaks me out. If, if I had to do a teleprompter, like I actually, whenever we would do those interviews and there's a teleprompter that I have to read off, my heart is racing. Like I'm, mm. I'm really nervous. And so it's kind of a problem because I had to say this whole speech is a, a page and a half of what I had to say. And Sistine knows I was losing it. I probably read my speech 50 times. We actually went to the – it ended up being a huge ballroom with like yeah. 500 no, people. Yeah, five, yeah. Oh, that's the thing. We walk in. Sistine's like, oh, let's go check out the room so you can practice. It is 500 women. 500. 
500. It's not me doing a small speech. Now I realize I walk in massive stage. It's 500 women I have to talk to. Yeah. Yes. So I was losing my shit then. But night. you did such a good job. They play this video montage oh. of Sophia's almost heart journey from when she was a baby till now, mm -hmm. showing photos of her when she was in the hospital and like me and her walking down the hallway right after yeah. surgery. I bawled my fake oh, lashes she off. She was crying. It was really cute. <laughs> He's laughing. <laughs> Something funny, Chris? Oh, no. That's an endearing story. I was actually tearing up. Oh, you were tearing up? Yeah. <laughs> His lashes are falling no, off, too. It, I don't know why I've heard this story a million times. And it still makes But you. every time someone talks about it, I just lose my mind. Because I don't think... You're obviously the one getting the operation. Yeah. So you're dealing with your own mental warfare already. Mm -hmm. But it's so interesting how it affected each one of our family members differently. Yeah. And I remember I was in eighth grade and I'd just taken my final exam and I was begging my teachers to take the exam early so that I could go to the hospital and be there right before you go into surgery. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. I have, you know how people remember like s strange details about a traumatic time? Mm -hmm. I remember I was wearing fuzzy socks and Ugg boots and three layers and I sweat through two of them and I had so nervous. And I took my sock. I had to throw my socks away. I was sweating. Like I Aww. was a um, mess. Well, you're obviously more of a mess, but it was yeah. so weird seeing your older sister in that environment. You had a giant tube coming out of your neck. Yeah. You looked like a ghost. Oh, I would hate to see you like that. Yeah. Yeah. When I close my eyes at night, I still see it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. So I will say, thank the Lords. I actually did it really well. Like I killed it. I killed it. And I'm so proud of myself because I practiced a lot. That definitely helped. But you know what's so underrated? And I know this sounds silly and, and everyone says this, is actually taking three deep breaths. I know, I know everyone's like, oh, but you, people no. always say, truly taking those deep breaths, like three, holding it and letting it go because mm -hmm. my heart was racing. And I know that when I have a fear of doing something, my heart races, my hands shake. And then that's when I start to mumble and I start to speed my speech. And so I'm like, I need to calm my heart rate. And I think I can kind of get through this. And that's really what I did was focus on getting my heart rate down. And then I was able to do it. And then you were so fine. natural up there. Thanks. You were riffing with the audience. You flowed naturally. I blacked out. I had no idea if she I did. She blacked out. She was hammered. I was <laughs> but you did such a good job. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. We did have a really interesting evening to follow. What did we do that evening? We went to our cousin's house oh gosh and you are just a silly goofy fool what is wrong with me and famous nfl players and really messing up bad in front of them remember the one i almost killed on thanksgiving yeah you almost did kill one now on thanksgiving. i did i now i oh so do you want to explain sure <laughs> sure we're all sitting around the dinner table and sophia's standing for some reason mm -hmm. my uncle says something funny because I think it has something to do with his pee because he keeps peeing blue. He's taking some medication and it's making him like, he says he's peeing like a smurf. Yeah, so he keeps <laughs> peeing blue. And as he was saying that in front of this NFL athlete, who isn't just an NFL athlete, he happens to be. Like the. The guy. The guy. The big guy. Sophia takes a huge sip of water. And I'm behind him. He's sitting in the chair like this and I'm standing right here listening to the story. And she does a spit take all, all over, over his, his back. His back. And and to make it worse, to make it worse, it so you run out of the room. I was so Grab your purse, run past the table, and said, "We're leaving now. Goodbye." <laughs> and just left. You didn't even say, "I'm sorry." You didn't even grab a napkin for him. You just left. The moment I saw him do this, I was like, "I'm out." He was like, "I'm out." Oh God, it's so embarrassing. How do you do that? I didn't mean to. Of course, I like. I, did I think I haven't done a spit take? Who I does spit takes no anymore? No one. No one. I just drink water at the worst moment and I spit it all over his back. And obviously, I realized this about myself. Fight or flight, I flight. I flew. She flew. <laughs> I flew. Well, I ran out of there. Producer like, Chris. Avoid. Producer Chris told us that's assault if you spit on someone and leave. Lock so her I, up. I, Lock <laughs> her up. Clink, clink. So I assaulted an NFL player. Yeah. Uh, accidentally. But... He also said, I'll see you in New York to Sistine and I. So I think she I'm said forgiven. intentionally. And she knew what she was doing, leaving an imprint. This, what am I, like marking my territory like a dog? Maybe you were. Maybe internally. Oh, my God. Hmm. 
You actually have had such a random last few days. Yeah. And then what happened to you at the airport? Oh, wait. You're, this is so funny. Okay. You're so Sistine messy. Sistine thinks I'm so creepy. Yeah. That, wow. I'm in like on a level right now. Um, so basically, Sistine and I are in line at the airport. And I'm not looking too bad, but I'm, I'm also just – it's 7 in the morning. And we're waiting in line to check into our flight. And I see there's a guy, like one person ahead of us. And he's so cute. He's super tall. And he's definitely my type. Looks and he's like a golfer. Kind, he's like six five. He doesn't look like a golfer. But he just had golfer no, guy. He looked energy. like a basketball player. Really? Well, he was wearing basketball gear. He was wearing sweatpants. Well, it, it looked like one of those travel team outfits. Whatever. So he was wearing a hoodie that said USC and pants that said USC. And I thought in my head, fellow Trojan. Like, no, why not? Should I say something? I know Sophia's brain before she even has to say anything. She looks at me. I look at her. And she just gives me, sisters have this, where you just have that look in your eye. And I said, okay, she thinks this guy is obviously very attractive. So, I do something so creepy, though. I didn't, We're I, in line for, I kid you not, two minutes. And she shows me her phone and found his name, his profile, his LinkedIn, found everything in 90 seconds. Where he works. And I said, you are the creepiest okay. person. In my defense, in my defense, his bag had his first and last name on it. <laughs> Looked it up. Insane. Because <laughs> I wanted to see how old he was in case I was like gonna hit on it. Like and a I knew what she was doing. She goes, Should I say old. something? Should I say something? I said, No, it is too early for this. So it is too early. I think am I this is the thing. I've I've had this newfound confidence in the mentality of saying, What if this is the one? Like, what if let, hear me out, hear me out, hear me out. You hear about those stories of like missed opportunities and I should have said yes, I regret it, blah, blah, blah. And so suddenly my mind just goes, I just have to say, like, just say hi. Cause what if, what if, just what, that's uh, it. What no. if? So, I'll tell you what the truth behind it. If we were on the street, if we were anywhere else, if we had a restaurant, there wouldn't have this what if in your head. There's something about being at the airport where if you see someone remotely your age, you romanticize a life with them. <laughs> like, that, am I wrong? Like, if you see someone that is handsome uh, and looks like he's in your age bracket, yeah. there's always, like, a weird tension. Yeah. Like, why only at the airport, though? Totally. I don't know. But we were in line, and there was there was the the tension was building. He was not looking at me, by the way. So it was Your tension. My tension. Not his. Not his. Just mine. <laughs> so I decided screw it he's like about to he's in line he's about to go to the stand so he he would have been gone it would have been a missed opportunity i'm like okay let me say something and i said hey did you go to usc and he says no and i go oh and then he goes i just work with the team and i go okay i thought you were a trojan with all your gear and he goes no bye and he walks away and i was like <laughs> i'm not gonna lie it was one of the, most, the saddest moments I've seen. He gave me nothing. And then the guy in front of us, because there was a guy in between this like older man. What did he say to you? Or I think he, he was like, damn, that's hard. <laughs> <laughs> and I, and then like, I, this older guy and he has all this like Gucci gear on. He goes, damn, that's tough. <laughs> and then I told so her, I said, look, I tried to tell her. I tried. And he goes, listen, I respect she shot her shot, but. Damn. <laughs> Damn. So I walked to the counter with my tail between my legs. I never saw him again. What happened in No Boy November? I never, I, I said no alcohol November. It's you also said no boy, no glute November. Ah. Uh, How's that working for you? Uh, well, obviously well, because I did definitely have a repellent at this point with all my cystic acne. <laughs> Shitting on myself today. <laughs> yeah, shit on uh, me. Shit on me about something. Okay. Roast uh, me. Roast me. Oh, I actually wanted to ask you this. Mm. Sistine said that her ex reached out and she was going to maybe see him in LA, but you ended up not doing that. Why? It was a conundrum. Big word of the day. <laughs> it was a conundrum. conundrum. <laughs> because part of me has this false sense of. I don't even know how to describe it. Like, I, I truly believe in my delusional state that you can be friends with your exes. And I'm starting to realize as I get older, that's just not feasible. That's not really a thing. Unless you guys ended on total agreement and it was perfectly platonic, 
then there's just no way. It's just, what's the point? I also think you know once you've been intimate with someone, there's no backpedaling as to like how they viewed you before. Like the relationship will never be the same. Yeah. Well, I yeah. Obviously, people have their own opinions about this, and they go, "Yeah, I can be friends with my." Ex. If you can, show God. me the way. Show me I the car facts. <laughs> Sophia. <laughs> anyway, so I had this big debate in my head because he'd reached out for my birthday in June and it was just his birthday. So I thought, okay, I'm going to text him as well. Yeah. Because he made the first white flag. And so I did. And we were talking. It was so mm. nice. The conversation was super platonic yeah. and sweet. You guys are on an amicable note. So totally. It's, it's good. So I was like, you know what? Why not see him? When I'm in LA, like yeah. just to grab coffee or dinner. But then I also was, start, people were asking, what are you gonna gain out of this conversation? Like, do you need closure? Mm -hmm. Do you want to truly see how he's doing? Do you think it'll make you feel better, feel worse? And I was like, holy shit, I actually don't need anything from this person. So why would I put myself through this emotional battle to potentially feel like, oh, maybe I do still like him? Or maybe I hate him more. And same for him, too. You might have been What's doing him a favor as well. Because it's also, if you don't think you're going to see something coming from that, then don't put him in the position of thinking that there is. Totally. You know? Yeah. I think it was a smart idea. Thank you. Like, I do I do like your guys' um, friendship-ish that you guys have, but I do think that some things need to just lie as they are and not, you know, push it. I know. know. I know. There's no reason to. Um, another thing we did in LA, though, I have to share, because I'm just so nervous about it. I'm not going to lie. We went to our production studio for our TV show, mm -hmm. and we sat in the room for what, 10 hours editing The Family Stallone yeah. from episode one to episode 10. I'm not going to lie. I look freaking boy obsessed crazy in this next season. Yeah. I thought you were going to say something to deny that. <laughs> no, yeah, you do. I look insane. Yeah, you do. But it's okay. I kiss someone on camera. No, you look fine. By the way, compared to last season, you look way, I'll be honest, you didn't showcase your personality that much. Yeah, but if last this season, is my like, personality. No, it's it's not. It's You are, you're, okay, in your defense, that was just kind of the MO of your storyline was like, okay, we're going to have Sistine. Dating. Dating. A lot. And then it just ended up being that way. I mean, I date someone at the end, but it's more so you get to showcase, like, your humor. Like, you but look funny in it. All the guys look kind of crazy look, in it. You I don't understand. look crazy. You look a little boy obsessed, but you don't look crazy. I understand dating when you're 25 is totally normal. And if it was just playing out as it did on camera, I would feel fine. Yeah. But it's what they did with the editing that really... It's kills so me. funny. They have me in slow mo, biting my lip in slow mo, playing this romantic <laughs> music as I'm doing. Like it's no, so literally, you guys. It's so funny. Like when you see the tactical training of her wrestling one of the guys that was a Navy SEAL. She I'm literally wrestling a Navy SEAL, and he has me pinned down on the ground like this. And Sistine bites her lip. <laughs> <laughs> And He's to trying to teach us how to combat someone. And I'm you see me on the side. I'm knocking this like six, eight man to the ground. Because like, ah! you're supposed to flip him over. This team literally sits there. No, she they have her. they zoom in on my face. They put this hazy filter on it to make it look romantic. They put me in slow-mo. They play Let's Get It On by Marvin Gaye. And then they see me slow-mo biting my lip as this guy has me pinned down. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna like who's it was gonna funny. want me after it's, that? You look awesome. Sophia, you I look, look so insane. funny. No, you you don't look insane. You look awesome. Um I look I mean look, I'm like the one on the side going, I don't want to date anyone. I look like Mr. Grump over here. Like, <laughs> no boys for me still. Um, it's just No, it's you look fun. You look fun. It's gonna be funny. You guys are gonna love it. I love oh, it. God. She definitely loves it. It's good. The 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 guy choices are a little questionable. Oh, wait, speaking of guys, so the the haunted house date that I went on. Yeah. He was giving me shit that I'm not spontaneous enough mm -hmm. and that I don't travel more and that I don't do this more and I'm too in my head about everything and I should just go and live life and not think and, you know, talk it over with myself after I've done it. All this bullshit, right? So I got hyped up. I got hyped up and I was like, you know what? You're right. So I booked a trip to London alone yeah, but you know, for one one was for work, but then you end up extending it. 
what am I going to th- like, what am I going to do alone in London? Well, your original plan was to go with someone. Yeah, but that's also crazy. And now you're like, you don't want to do that. So that's now crazy. I don't know what you're doing in London alone. Will you come with me, please? No. Please, we can go to Magic Mike show like we did last no, time. No, please. I mean, look, everyone's probably like, you're complaining about going to London. No, look, I love London, but I also just want to be in the heat. I don't want to be in the cold again. I literally just am leaving the cold to go back into cold. What am I going to do I alone? Like you should, then just don't stay there that long. Come back. I already know you. You're going to come back early. Damn it. You're already booking it back. Okay. So Sistine and I were thinking about how we wanted to map out this chaotic, silly episode, silly goofy episode. And of course- Did you say goopy? Goofy. You said goopy. I had a speech delay. Well, I was 12. Yeah, so please. It doesn't count. No. So we were thinking silly, goofy episode. And we are thinking what we wanted to talk about. And we thought it'd be fun to bring back our OG segments. And so, Sistine is going to have a bedtime story. I don't. Are you serious? No, because I was going to do listener questions. Okay, I'm going to start this again. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) So, Sistine and I were talking about how we wanted to plan this silly episode that we're currently doing. And we thought it'd be fun to bring back OG segments. And so, I'm bringing in a conspiracy theory-ish and Sistine's going to do some listener questions. I know she put it on her story, so I don't even know what the questions are. She doesn't know what the conspiracy is, but I can kind of start because mine are pretty quick. And mine are less conspiracy, but more theories, if that makes sense. Lay it on me, sister. Okay, I have two. I have two. Okay, ready? Conspiracy theory. Bum, bum, bum. Okay, so speaking of Harry Potter, oh, you know, we've been in this trend. You know when they light up their wand, it's um, Lumos? Yeah. Right? And then to turn off, it's Knox? Yes. Okay. Watch this. Ready? She's pulling out her phone. Lumos. What? Siri knows? Knox. Wait. Knox. It's not working. But it says, let me know if you want to turn it off. But Mm -hmm. so, basically, what I just did was, if you tell Siri... Lumos, it turns on your camera light, your camera flashlight. Is that kind of cool? Wait, but that's not a conspiracy theory. No, I said they were theories. Oh, that's not even that's a theory. Not even that's a theory. IPhone. That's just <laughs> that's an iPhone hack. Yeah, no. <laughs> I knew it. You know what? This is why I never let you pick the theories out. <laughs> I couldn't find any. Are you kidding me? Okay, I was going to do one for Christmas, and, it, and the conspiracy was that the Grinch that stole Christmas, the Grinch wanted to kill all the characters in Whoville, and I thought that was too, <laughs> that was too dark. <laughs> that would have been better than giving me an apple hack. <laughs> <laughs> Sophia. Wait, okay, I have another one. Now, this is just more, this is not, this is now just a theory. Okay. okay. So, now this is totally off. This is, this episode's so random. Okay. So, did you know? <laughs> The side that you sleep on in your bed is tells a lot about your personality. Lay it on me. Okay, so psychologists say what side of the bed do you sleep on? I, I sleep, sleep on the right. On my yeah, my right side. Okay, so psychologists say that the left side are people who are hardworking, happy, and self assured. They I all- sleep on the left side. Wait, I'm not done. Oh. They also prefer old music, drama, movies, and beer. People on the left side, and they say that people on the right side are more grounded. They're more analytical and logical. And you may also enjoy rock music, action movies, and wine. What What if you sleep on both? Because I toss and turn. Then yeah, I can see a mixture between the two of you. I'm on the right. I'm for sure that one. Okay, that's interesting. Isn't it interesting? That's all I have. <laughs> you had one job. <laughs> you had one job. Lumos. This bitch. <laughs> I'll tell you a theory. I think we've said it on the show before, but just to sort of make up for your failed job here. Um, the theory is that what if oxygen is actually poisonous? So see, we already did this on our other episode. I'm telling Chris. Oh. Thank you. What if oxygen is actually poisonous and it takes about 75 to 100 years to kill us? I guess we'll never know. <laughs> I guess we'll never know. That's all we need to know. Should we do some listener questions? Yeah, please. Yeah, please. I also wrote down, this is what I wrote down. I think this is my favorite episode we shot. Um, I wrote down, is our Webkins dead? I think so. Is our Club Penguin dead? They're probably starving. Can you imagine how hungry our Webkins are right now? 
Oh, speaking of starvation, there's also a Harry Potter theory that he hallucinated the entire thing because he's stuck under his uh, staircase starving and that when he gets taken to Hogwarts that he's dragged by like crazy people and he's just imagining the whole thing. Or what if Hogwarts is heaven? Or maybe he died. Well, that's not heaven. He gets killed. Why is there sad music playing outside? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, okay. This person actually wrote a good question. Okay. She said, how can I start to feel comfortable going to the gym alone as a beginner? Hmm. That's tough because I still get uncomfortable going to the gym sometimes. I'm always uncomfortable. What's helped me, though, is when I just listen to music, I feel like I'm not... I'm still too in my head about who's around or do, is my form bad or whatever. So I actually listen to either an audiobook or a podcast. There's something yeah. about listening to other people speak that distracts you because you're focusing on that. I also think that two things have helped me a lot with getting over gym anxiety, which is so funny because I never really had that until I moved here. I get kind of not nervous, but I just get a little overwhelmed with so many people in there is that I wear Whatever makes me super comfortable. I'll literally wear sweatpants to the gym and a tank top, and that will make me feel comfortable. And I get two weights, and I stand in the corner, and I just do what I need to do. Like, I don't sometimes use all the racks. Like, sometimes those machines are just too much, and you have a guy, like, sitting behind you just in line. That's the worst. When someone's like, uh, taps you on the shoulder. Yo, how many sets you got left? Get the hell out of my face. You know what's funny? I don't get that at all. You do a lot. How about when I'm done, sir? Thank you. Yeah. But that's what I think that's a good suggestion is listening to something that distracts you, you know, getting two weights, moving to a corner that you feel like, you know, and wearing your comfortable clothes. Yes. Yeah. Put on a little makeup, too. It always makes me comfortable. This person said, can you give dating advice for 25 year old girls who are starting online like Hinge, et cetera? You're you're you should answer this one. I think and people won't agree, but everyone has somewhat of a type that they like Mm -hmm. and I know it's so silly to have to pay for extra things on a dating app but hinge for example if it means me spending four more dollars to specifically see the only only the guys that I like right that helps a lot um I would say advice don't give any online guy your weekends so do not say yes to a Friday or Saturday date give them only weekdays don't go to dinner, maybe just one drink. So if you hate it, you can leave after the first one. And uh, yeah, it sucks. Honestly, it sucks. And the weirdest part about online dating is I start to get in my own head about it and I start to feel discouraged. Like if I don't get, if this guy didn't match me back or he just ghosted me and I'm like, wait, he doesn't like me. Or Yeah. Well, you know what's funny? <clears throat> Speaking of online dating, I just was talking to one of my girlfriends from college, and we haven't talked in a wa- long time, and she has a new boyfriend now. And I was like, where did you meet him? They, I think they're going to get married. And she was telling him, the moment I met him, I knew the like ground shook, and I just felt it. And you just will know when you know, right? And I'm like, great, that's awesome. And I go, where did you meet him? And she said, Hinge. And I, it does work. And so she said, I said, oh, why hinge? Like she's she's like me where she kind of overthinks things. And she's normally someone that is traditional and likes to meet someone in person organically. And I said, what made you want to go on hinge? And she goes, you know, I got to the point where I've talked to enough people that they've said they met someone on hinge. And she said she went into it just not overthinking it, not analyzing every single guy so intensely of like who said yes, who said no. And it just worked. Like it just, you just have to kind of go into it thinking like it could work. It could not work. Mm -hmm. All you're doing is trying. And so is everyone else. And sometimes you just get really lucky. And so that's what I, you know, before the beginning of the episode, I said, you know, shoot your shot. I went up to that random, not USC, USC player. And I know it sounds funny, but I do think that the energy you put out there and the opportunities that you give yourself is just going to give it a greater chance to find the person. And so I think it's smart to do it. Love that. This person said, should I block and unfollow my ex on IG? It bothers me that I can't be updated with my life. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Okay, well, let me explain this because I kind of, I went through a breakup recently where Sistine actually follows her ex the whole time. Difference is I have them all muted. Yeah. For me personally, I don't know if you're like this lady, but um, lady. 
I am someone that has a really bad habit of checking in all the time. Like I, I wish I could tell myself to not check, to not look, to see who they're following, who they're, what they're liking. It's just, it's, it's a part of me. Like I'm curious to a fault. And so for me, and this was, and I, I don't know how he felt about it, but for me, and I didn't, this was nothing against him at all. I knew for myself for to heal and grow and move on is I had to just unfollow him and then remove him as a follower because he, thankfully he's private. So he just, I just was able to like not look at his stuff because he's private, but I muted his friends. I unfollowed him. He, I removed him as a follower and honestly, and this also sounds kind of extreme. I deleted every single photo and some people aren't like that, but I swear to you out of sight, out of mind in this generation, it is so hard to move on because you are constantly yeah. being reminded, reminded yeah. of the good times, the photos, the memories. I mean, your phone pops up. It goes three years ago today. You were in the Bahamas with your boyfriend. And then you're like, oh, God, like, how do I move on? I look so happy there. And sometimes you forget the reasons why you got to this point and why, you know, life turned out the way it did. And I think that the best thing for you or for me, and this is just personal, is that out of sight, out of mind, do everything that you can do to focus on yourself. And if that means removing the reminders, which was for me, because I'm in a very nostalgic person, I will go back on every memory, every text, every photo all mm -hmm. the time, then do that. Because, and I know it sounds tough and it's hard and it feels like you're, you know, it's like a death when you delete these. I, it was tough for me. I just want to say unfollowing and removing him and because then deleting the photos real. was horrible. That like, makes it real. Like, yeah, it yeah. was not easy. I was crying. It was ex the worst, but I don't have the constant reminder every single day there, which is also really, really relieving to me that when I go on my phone, I'm nothing is going to pop up, you know? hundred percent. Someone said, what do you do if your best friend is in a toxic relationship? Oh, I know I can answer this a little go bit. Go for it. I know you, you probably could too. I think your friends have been in this situation more than mine. I'll just say this because I think this is so tough to do confront or discuss because, you know, on one hand, you're looking out for your best friend's interest, but the other hand, you have to also let your friend do what she feels is right for herself. And so all I recommend is this. I think that you completely have the right to discuss it with your girlfriend and just say your concerns and do it come from a very, very loving place, please be sensitive to it because I can tell you right now, there's probably nothing worse than hearing your friends disapprove of someone that you love. Mm -hmm. And, you know, immediately that person is going to shut off, be deterred, shut you out, which is the last thing you want to do because they think that you are always going to be uncomfortable around your boyfriend. I think if you come in asking questions, seeing how she's doing, and really getting to the root of then why you're asking these questions and not accusing, but just coming in very, very delicately, then you let her decide. Because I think it's more about planting the seed and just letting your friend know that you're seeing something, you're hearing something. And that's all you can really do. Because I'll tell you, at the end of the day, you know, everyone has to do what they got to do. And I'm not saying that this talk, if it depends on the toxic relationship. If it's if it's something to an extreme of abuse, like I I don't know how to confront that. I'm talking about something a little bit less than that. Maybe you just don't approve of her boyfriend. Maybe he, he just doesn't treat her that well. Um, so I'm talking about that level, not not the extreme level. I I have absolutely no um, leg to stand on answering that question because I wouldn't know what to do. But I think that you then after if she ends up staying with him, you have to support her. And you have to love her and you have to just be there for her. And I just think that it, it's so tough because you will lose her if you keep bringing it up and keep shutting her out. She definitely knows. She she almost needs to figure it out for herself. Yeah. You can only give advice so much. Exactly. Before you start to, like you said, push someone away. And that's that's my recommendation. It's a tough place. I've been there before. But I do believe at the end of the day you have to – you have to be so, 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 so sensitive to that person's feelings as well because it's really easy to, you know, you're not in their relationship. So you're just an outsider seeing what you're seeing. And so you have to understand, like, she has all these things and memories with him that you don't. So, you know, 
Think about if she was in your shoes, if it was the same thing. Okay, we'll end on this question because I really like it. Tips for self-care when you are in a mental rut. What do you do to stay well, especially in the colder months? You can answer this one. I feel like I'm in a mental rut every day. And what I've found that's helped me through therapy is I need to... I'm one of those people where if I don't have a schedule for myself, even if it doesn't involve work, then I'll feel... Like, in, I want to stay in bed and I'll feel in a hole. So having a checklist has really helped me. Um, in terms of the colder months, that's going to be difficult because you can't really leave. But something I'll do, for example, like today, I have my checklist, the podcast, and then all the errands that I need to run. And then you just have to try to make yourself busy. Getting out of a mental rut is having distraction. And not distraction as in partying, going out, drinking. It's having a, what's the scene set in a routine? Because I think that, the last month I've been in a little bit of a mental rut. I think that like with my skin flaring up mm -hmm. and things like that, like, I've been feeling a little insecure you about it. You need routine. And so I've decided to have a set routine. I'm like, okay, I'm going to not drink. I'm going to eat anti-inflammatory foods. I'm going to meditate every single morning. I'm going to go for walks every day. I'm going to work out for 30 minutes if I can. Yeah. It's just having, it, involving new things into your life that give you a little bit it's of the newness. energy. It's the newness. You need newness and it does and it has yeah. to be healthy newness it can't yeah. be a new man it can't be a new I mean maybe if it's a healthy new man but like you have to focus on healing yourself first I know it sounds you know no it's true you actually have to says. try different things to see what makes you feel good to get yeah. yourself out of your own head for example I started saying okay every single morning I'm gonna wake up I'm not gonna look at my phone and I'm gonna read 20 pages so that's something I never did. I introduced it and I really like this part of my routine. And then I get up and then I give myself some praise in the mirror because that's very important. And then I go design something Then I'll say, okay, I'm going to work out for 30 minutes. I'm going to run. So just giving yourself tasks, mm -hmm. it makes you almost feel like fulfilled, like yeah. you're doing something. I think you have to find something you're excited about. Like mm -hmm. Sistine loves design. She's never, you know, pursued it before. Now she's like, I'm going to just do it every day. I'm, and that makes me feel good. I'm going to start knitting. And she Okay, she wants to start. <laughs> you want you want some gloves? No. How about a headband? Yeah. I'll make you a knitting headband. Like one of those cute ones I can wear. Hundred percent. Thanks. Um, we'll end on this question: Why is Sophia so hot? Someone wants to know. Hmm. Why am I so hot? You know, I think it's my I think it's my personality. I think it comes from the inside out, and then I'm so sorry for this episode. <laughs> I'm so sorry about it. No, I, I'm really sorry. Um, we we really love you guys. So Let's see if we release it. Let's see if we release I it. I think we should. All right. For shits and giggles. All right. We love exposing ourselves, and we love you guys. Yep. Thank you so much for listening to this very confusing episode of the Unwax Podcast. I hope your Monday has some laughs, and you know you can Tuesday. Come out on Tuesdays. <gasps> yep. There we go. Yep. Um, we're going to keep doing unsolicited advice, so make sure you leave your question in the ratings and review section under our Apple podcast page. Subscribe to our YouTube. Give us five stars. Stop giving us one star and saying, we love you. Yeah, what the heck <laughs> is not that? Nice. <laughs> it's not you're nice. You're giving us bad rankings. Five. If you like us, give us five. If you have a complaint, DM us. Don't give us one, please. Honestly, the way you're yelling at them, I'd give us one star too. That was a little scary. I'm just passionate. She needs some coffee. We love you guys. We'll see you next Tuesday. I don't need coffee. I need Xanax. Bye. <laughs>